Let's uh, switch into bonds now and certainly a reaction to some of the Reserve Bank comments of the last few days. Stephen Nash from Fig Securities. Dr. Nash, warm welcome to you. Nice to have you with us as always. Uh, tell me about your view on more bond issuance. It's timely given banks have been out with their numbers and maybe uh, one sense is will there be a need for them to tap the bond market? Well, I, I think with regard to the retail bond market, I think that's the interesting area. Um, we have seen um, some major issues, the Commonwealth Bank uh, issue into this market. I think this year we're going to see more banks, possibly even some major banks, entering this market again. Uh, there will be also some high yield issues. There's a lot of rollover of debt this year, so I imagine uh, the retail bar, uh, bond market is going to heat up quite a bit. Uh, have you got a time frame on that? Well, I would have thought we, we're going to see a few issues coming out within the next uh, two or three months, yeah, mm. at least. Uh, and I think some of the, there may, may even be a major bank issue fairly soon. Very interesting comments by Assistant Governor Philip Lowe this week, uh, particularly when it comes to the Australian consumer. Mm. Uh, what yeah. do you make of this? Well, I think, you know, as I've said before, I think that, that this is an emerging theme for the RBA. Um, previously, they had a, a, a th you know, the, the growth story, but they also had the global uh, advanced economies constraining them. But I think the, the consumer is becoming uh, the new form of constraint for the RBA. Um, Philip Lowe basically tried to paint the picture that consumer caution is a more medium-term issue for the bank. A lot of commentators have been just dismissing it as some sort, something ephemeral, something that will just go away, uh, something that they shouldn't be looking at. But I think the RBA is treating this quite seriously. I think they basically feel that um, the constraint of the consumer and the re reduction of debt is an indication of a, a completion of, of a move to a structurally lower level of interest rates in Australia and um, that the level of debt uh, will probably, you know, that, that consumers are willing to take on is not going to go up dramatically from here. Why do you think the bond market's been one of those that have been poo-pooing this uh, notion as well? Uh, well, I think they've just been focused on the, the old story, which is, you know, the growth led from China and, and the potential for the RBA to tighten. I think that's still there. And I think, you know, in, in all reasonableness, I think would have, we would think that one more tightening is, is still there this year. But mm. if this concern about the consumer increases, I think that... Uh, that tightening may go off the agenda completely. Do you think that's had any bearing on the call made by Moody's this week when it comes to our banks mm. uh, and just perhaps bringing them more into the central part of uh, that double uh, A category band uh, as opposed to the upper end? Well, I think the, the Moody's uh, announcement was, a, was about uh, recognising the dependence of the banks on the wholesale funding market. Really, that's been there for a long time. I think the agencies have been becoming more and more conservative over the last few years. They've had a lot of uh, lawsuits against them and uh, they're basically becoming more conservative. So I think this is part of that move to become um, more conservative and it also focuses, uh, refocuses the banks back on alternative sources of funding from the wholesale market. Now, hopefully the retail bond market can help but it's not gonna, it's not gonna help dramatically in the short term but over time I think it will. Is it a given though that demand is gonna kick in that they would need to tap new sources and seek out new sources. If we're agreeing the consumer mm. has changed its approach to debt, mm. you know, where's the new demand going to come from? Well, even in even in the last speech, it, it mentioned that uh, that investors are preferring lower risk assets. I think that's really translating into the deposit market now. What happens now is the question, and I think uh, what consumers are looking at is the fixed income market getting out of. Uh, term deposits into possibly higher yielding fixed income and uh, that would be a good development. I think also in order to get the retail market going we really need some better form of taxation of fixed income. As the Henry report did indicate that uh, equities are, are taxed a lot lower than fixed income and that's, I think the Treasury has addressed that last year but I think there's a lot more work that's got to be done there. Well, again, as a time horizon on that because until that work's done mm. uh, you can understand that it's going to set back the, the growth in that space. Yes, we're, we also have um, uh, an issue with regard to the, the minimum parcel size, which has always been 500,000. Uh, it, it really constrains consumers in terms of particularly direct holdings of fixed income from getting a good diversity of bonds. So hopefully there, there could be a range of measures that could be introduced to 
encourage people to own bonds and I think it would be very positive for bank funding. That minimum parcel size, what would you like to see it reduced to? Uh, well, for, it would have to be for what they call vanilla bonds or something that uh, is, is senior debt issued by an ASX listed company which has already uh, a lot of disclosure requirements. I, I would have thought something in the order of 10,000 would be good but look, there's, there's a lot of uh, discussion that has to occur and I think this is part of a package that has to be delivered that, you know, reliance on wholesale funding has to be fixed and one of the ways to fix it is by the retail bond market. All right. This is, uh, can we just roll offshore briefly in yeah. the time remaining? Intriguing views on the Bank of England and inflation, its battle with it. You're saying, really, uh, why get stressed? It's not a problem for them right now. Uh, well, the Bank of England has you know, quite a few issues at the moment. Um, they have issues with the currency and commodity prices, but in terms of the, the typical core inflation repressions, wages and those sort of things, they're, they're basically not there right now. So um, although the headline inflation is quite strong, I think you've got to look through that and look at um, what's going on with the underlying economy. And I think it's, it's looking quite weak. I mean, with the public sector cutbacks they're getting there, you know, they, they're going to have severe problems, particularly apparently in the, in the northern uh, towns apart from London. Uh, a lot of these towns will be severely affected by these public service cutbacks. So I think in, um, in the next few months we're going to see that. All right, Stephen, got to leave it there. Okay. Many thanks indeed. Have a great weekend. Thanks very much. Okay. Dr. Stephen Nash from Figs.